first on CNBC at Post 9. Madam Secretary, nice to see you. Great Welcome. to be here. Thanks so much for having me. So just in terms of news of day on oil prices, China's in there a little bit. It's been weak demand. And then the Middle East, as tensions escalate between Israel and Hezbollah, I do wonder what you think the scope is for a wider regional escalation that could potentially involve more directly Iran, the big producer. Yeah, I mean, everybody is, is watching this and seated at the end of their, of their chairs for a variety of reasons, not just because of oil prices, of course. But, um, you know, it's one of the reasons why, honestly, being energy secretary at this time has been so rewarding is because we have really been investing. Obviously, we've seen record amounts of oil production, record amounts of gas production, but we've also seen record amounts of renewables uh, generated on the grid, like unbelievable amounts. We had 30 Hoover dams worth of clean power added to the grid this year. We are having 30. That's a huge amount of added uh, power, clean power. So Is that it's from really the inflation reduction. Act? Yes, it's because the United States has become irresistible for in, for developers of clean energy generation, but also for manufacturers of the products that get us there, whether it's EVs or batteries or solar panels. We've had since the passage of the Inflation Reduction Act. Just to say, I mean, policy actually works. We've had over 800 factories announced that they are coming to the U.S. or expanding in the U.S. because of the, the public-private partnership that has been created as a result of the president's Invest in America agenda. It's so, so great. It's so exciting because that means 400,000 more people are working in this clean energy space, which is uh, record amounts. It's, it's really an I wonder, amazing I wonder how much time. of that is at risk as, you know, if, if Donald Trump becomes president, he has threatened to roll some of it back to help pay down the deficit and pay for some of his other initiatives. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing, is that, in fact, just this past week, there were 18 Republicans who signed on to a letter saying, please don't roll this back because we're seeing the benefits in our states. 86% of the investment, so there has been half a trillion dollars worth of investment in this clean energy space since the passage of the Inflation Reduction Act. Half a trillion dollars. Of that, $1 for a public money, $6 of private money. That's a 71% increase over the two years prior. That money, that investment, those jobs are going 86% to communities that have below co college graduation rates or below weekly income wages. A lot of that is in rural communities. A lot of it, 60 to 70%, is in red states, red counties. So it would be, honestly, political malpractice to undo what is being done and what is happening and people being hired in these communities. At the same time that we've been trying to obviously replace uh, typical energy sources with renewables, we now have this incredible potential uptick in the need for power because of data yeah. centers yeah. and the growth of generative AI. Uh, how do you see it playing out? I mean, we talk a lot about nuclear power now. We were just yeah. talking about Three Mile Island coming back online, or at least one of the reactors, and any number of other uh, nuclear uh, sites as well being recommissioned, yeah. so to speak. How's it going to mix out, given our power needs could be 20 percent higher than they are right now in a, in a handful of years? Well, the estimates are 15 percent higher within 10 years as a result both of AI as well as all this new manufacturing activity, as well as electrifying the transportation sector. So we are going to need more power. But I'm telling you, we are adding that power. We're adding record amounts of clean power. But in addition, the hyperscalers for these um, big data centers, they all have commitments to clean energy, too, and they don't want to see themselves locate in a community where their demand for power causes everybody else's rates to go up. So they're committed. They've been telling us to bringing that power with them, which is why the need for nuclear small modular reactors, co-locating data centers with small modular reactors, or the partnerships, for example, with Constellation and Microsoft for Three Mile Island to turn on more power. We've got a ton of nuclear sites in this country that have already been permitted for additional reactors that could be powering data centers as well. So we're working with those hyperscalers to make sure that they, in fact, bring that clean power with them and don't uh, put that cost on everyday citizens.